I am Gail Locke McDowell, author of Cracking the Coding Interview. Today I'm going to solve the connected cell problem. So in this problem, we have a matrix of zeros and ones, and we want to find the largest region of connected ones, where that's to find to, to find to be ones that are adjacent to each other, either looking horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. So depth first search is perfect for this problem. We could use breadth first search instead, but generally we find depth first search to be a little bit easier to implement and it works just as well. So we might as well use it. So what we're going to do is walk through the matrix and every time we see a one go do a depth first search on that region and get the size of it, tracking the biggest regions we go along. So pretty simple, basic for loops. Uh, by the way, I always find it's best to not use X and Y when we're dealing with matrices, because what I find is that people think that X should be the row and Y should be the column. And that's actually backwards. So just take it from me. Don't use X and Y as variable names. Row and column are, are really better choices. Okay. So if matrix of row and column is one, then do a traversal here. So do a depth first search here, get region size of matrix row comma column, and then max region, uh, basically update the max if necessary. The size of comma max region. Okay. So one thing we want to be sensitive to is not that we're not repeating work unnecessarily. So if we come across a one in, you know, the, the same region multiple times, which almost by definition we will, we don't want to repeat the same work in the same region. So there's different ways of doing this. One is we could track, we could have some sort of like Boolean visited matrix like this. And every time we search some, I need to put in links there, of course, but uh, every time we, you know, when we're doing get region size, pass in this visited list and make sure that visited is updated, not just for this row and column, but for everything else in the matrix or everything else in that region. And that will work, but it's actually kind of unnecessary. If we're okay destroying matrix, then let's just reuse that. And every time we get to a value in this region, just update matrix and clear that to make it a zero. And that'll avoid this issue. If we're not okay with destroying matrix, then we can just clone matrix. It's ultimately, it's kind of the same thing in the end. Okay. So now let's turn to region size. So get region size is going to take in the matrix and the row and the column, and then it's going to do a depth for search. So it's going to search out recursively from each of those areas. So first thing I want to do is my boundary checks. So I put in these boundary checks here, um, returning zero. So the region size is zero. So then what I want to do is I also want to check to make sure this is actually part of the region. So if matrix of row comma column is zero, return zero. So now comes kind of the interesting part. So the size of this region is going to be one for myself, plus the size of the region if I traversed up, down, left, right, diagonal. So initial size is one and then traverse. So there's different ways of doing this. I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to search from row minus one because I have to go in actually eight different directions. So all around. So row is less than while well, row to so start off R with row minus one, R is less than or equal to row plus one, R plus plus. So go through all three different rows, all three different columns here. Uh, minus one column less than or equal to C less than or equal to column minus one C plus plus and then search. So this is going to be size. So increase size by that area. So matrix of row comma column then return size. So here I did not have to put in any boundary checks because I've already done all of that here. So it makes my code a little bit shorter. I could, of course, instead check the check the bounds before I traverse or before I curse, but it's easier just to do it up here. And then I also want to make sure that I don't go search myself. I mean, I guess I could, but it's 
you know, probably a little better so that, that I don't do that. So I'm going to just skip over myself. So if, uh, yeah, I'll do it like this. If row does not equal this and column or column does not equal this. So make sure that one of them isn't equal so it's not myself. Then do this search. And then the other thing I need to do is I need to track some sort of way. I, I need to know that I haven't repeated, repeated this search and seen the same cell before. So I'll do this. Right after I check to see if this is zero, I'll clear this out. So set row of column, set row and column to be zero. So what's interesting here is that this will actually serve dual functions. It'll do a is visited check for this depth first search and make sure that I haven't, you know, I'm not running some sort of cycle in this search. But it'll also fulfill a value here on get region in that it'll make sure I'm not searching the same region multiple times. Now let's just look through this. Oops, this should have been matrix uh, that. And this should be actually plus one, a little typo there. Okay, now let's run this and see how we did. Beautiful. So this is, you know, not a, it's a pretty straightforward implementation of depth first search. It's not verbatim, it's not, you know, go implement depth first search to do this, but it builds off a lot of the same concepts, both the depth first search and of recursion in general. So one thing I'd like you to take away here is not just think about the applicability of depth first search, but also think about how I did these boundary checks. I've asked people a lot of, a lot of asked a lot of candidates questions that are very similar to this. And I'll often see that people do the bounds checking before recursing. And it adds, in some cases, so much more hassle to their code that's really unnecessary. So think about how you can really, you know, drill it down, really simplify how your code works. So keep that in mind for your future problems and good luck.